the sex tape business. Mm-hmm. You guys essentially, I mean, the celebrity sex tape business. Right. You guys essentially own that space. We've been fortunate and uh, we've been very successful and I think that along with that success brings more movies our way. So I think after, I mean it really started with the Pam and Tommy tape, that was the first one that we did and we sort of got a reputation for knowing how to distribute and how to market and then there were a few small ones. There was uh, the Janine and Vince Neil tape came after that. But, you know, Kim really broke it wide open. The Kim Kardashian tape was, was really an amazing phenomenon. And after that, sort of the floodgates opened and, and, and many more uh, sort of celebrities felt comfortable. Well, the interesting thing about celebrity sex tapes is that when you, when you sort of talk to the outside, you know, a uh, population. It almost seems like it's presented as this tape leaked and I had no idea how it happened and it's out there and I'm not making any money off of it and so forth. But the reality is, you know, from what I know about the, the porn industry is that you can't legally put out anything like that, any sort of, you know, pornography without having everyone sign off, without having licenses, you know, driver's license, identification, mm -hmm. and, you know, a bunch of different contracts that means that everyone's actually involved. Well, you know, celebrity sex tapes, they come in all different shapes and sizes, and they make their way to our office in many different ways. And I think what you see is that sometimes a tape will come to us and, and the, the, the person who's in it, the celebrity who's in it, will be upset about it, very upset about it. I think Kim is a perfect example. I mean, she went absolutely crazy. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the, the Kim Kardashian tape. How, talk about the whole story about how you obtained it and what, what, what uh, actually happened afterwards. Well, it was brought to us uh, by a third party. Uh, felt like the proper paperwork that we needed was in place that came along with it. Now that ultimately wasn't the case, but um, we went out there and said, look, we feel comfortable releasing this movie. Ultimately, we were able to have a conversation with Kim after much back and forth and, and lots of legal stuff going on, but ultimately she agreed to allow us to put out the tape. We paid her several million dollars. It was an amazing investment for us. And I think it worked out pretty good for her as well. Um, but ultimately, yes, we need to get an agreement. I think what you see the back and forth in the press is what happens prior to that, when somehow a tape does leak or a tape is stolen and it does find its way to my desk. And then we sort of reach out and say, look, we'd like to put this out. And the reality is, you can decide not to do a deal with us, that's fine. We will walk away and have nothing to do with it. But the internet's a funny place and these things seem to find their way out to the internet ultimately. So why don't you come along for the ride, make some money with it, and perhaps it can enhance your career. Do you guys still ultimately own the, the actual Kim Kardashian sex tape? Mm -hmm. Right? And yes. And your website and so forth. Correct. I had heard a rumor that she was trying to buy it back. Any truth in that? Well, we were approached about, I don't know, maybe two years ago by somebody who, I don't know who they were representing, but it may or may not have been Kim who was interested in, in, in purchasing the rights to the movie. Ultimately, we didn't make that deal. It wasn't enough money. And I'm not sure what they were really trying to buy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> millions of, uh, of copies out there either on the internet or on DVD. I'm not sure what, what that would have accomplished, but uh, yeah, we, we were approached. It was right before uh, her first marriage to uh, Chris Humphreys. At the time, I mean, now Kim Kardashian is a household name, but at the time, she was virtually unknown outside of, you know, like the Los Angeles circles. Why pay that type of money for an essentially unknown person? Well, a couple things. First of all, Kim was not unknown. She came from a very famous family. Her father represented OJ. Her best friend was Paris Hilton. Her stepfather was Bruce Jenner. I mean, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, there, there, was, there was a lot there for us to work with. 
But it wasn't until there was so much back and forth that this thing was like gaining steam. By the time we ultimately made the deal with Kim, she was a household name before the movie even came out because there was so much back and forth legally. Interesting. So the actual process of trying to put it out made her really a star. <laughs> really enhance it. No, I think what made Kim a star, and I'd like to take all the credit for it, but I don't think I can, and, and clearly the, the, the movie was, was a part of it, but it was the team that she surrounded herself with after. It was the, the marketing people, um, the, all, all of the people, the, her manager, her agents, all of those people were the ones who put together uh, a, a plan that made Kim who she, who she is today. So you're not surprised as to the, the level she's gotten to? I mean, I, 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 surprised in, in the way that, I mean, how unusual is it that somebody like that could be that big of a star? I mean, she is a major, 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 massive star, celebrity, no doubt about it. But, um, uh, you know, she had a great look, she was unique, and I think she did a great job marketing herself. The television show came soon after the movie, and I think that really helped to, to catapult her.